Guys, can we talk yeah. about hats? We're all wearing hats today. We are, yeah. What, you what are you advertising? I don't know. I don't know. It's just a hat. <laughs> um, uh, I'm not advertising. I'm showing support. That was a dig. And me. Yeah, that, that was, was a dig. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm showing support. Yeah. No, it's good. It's smart. You should yeah, do I have it. a question about hats. Mm-hmm. I've been, I've been, I've been wearing. I think the the listener would find, or or the watcher would find this uh, more interesting than the than this than the uh, the episode. I know I do. I don't know why. Um, just general conversation about things like hats. Then the sunny episode. Yeah, the sunny episode's hilarious. Uh, yeah, I have, I'm not po- commenting we'll, we'll on get that. Into that. Yeah, I just don't f- yeah. Yeah, talk the talking about. It. I've I've noticed that well, I'm having the most fun when we're just talking about hats or things of, of that nature. Of that nature, yeah, yeah. Um, I, like so the, got, I like the balance. There's a good balance because I. I do like when we start going in depth in terms of what we were thinking about why we made a choice that we made. And I think that's interesting for the listener Look, or this watcher. This is why the show works. I have an idea. You're like, I don't like that. Let's do this other thing. And you're like, I see validity in both of those. Let's just see how it goes. Mm-hmm. And then we just kind of find a happy medium. Yeah, but that's what I just said. I said I see validity in both. <laughs> well, hold on Glenn, a second. You no. indicated to him. But that's because that's because we've had this He's conversation before you- and and that's and that's something I've said to you. <laughs> no, what about hats? What about yeah? Get, I get started, into it. Okay, so uh, I um, my whole life I've worn hats, but I've turned the bill the way that your yours is, right? Yeah, the, yeah. And so I started seeing people wearing the flat bill, and I mm-hmm. thought, I don't know, I don't know if I can pull that off. Right. I, but I I do think it looks cool. I see Charlie. Wears, he's not wearing one today, really. He can do it either but way. But he can go either way. I can go he, either he way. He goes the flat, and I think it looks pretty cool. Now, I don't know if it looks cool because it seems like we're like 25-year-olds, like trying to look. And is it sad maybe that a 44-year-old is going to wear a flat brim hat? Seems like a young person's game. Hmm. I'm not sure, but I do like this hat. Is this what you're? Is this the question? Are you wondering? Yeah, I'm wondering. Can I pull off? Because I have now have I've now noticed that I've gone out and bought a couple of flat build hats, mm. and I I enjoy them. Can Can you take your your headphones off for a second? Yeah. Can I just. I like the flat build hat. I think it's a head shape thing. I I think yeah no I think it looks good. Um, I like I, it both. doesn't. I can't do I can't do it. My head is very oval shaped, so when when I do the flat brim thing, it's too the whole thing's too round. So it like presses into my temples. I can't. Can do I that. see this on you? Sure. Let's see. Let's I, go. I, I'm gonna I, help Glenn out because he's one handed. Caitlin says the same thing, and then she'll put on a hat like that, and it looks cool. This is uh, okay. See, that looks cool to me. Now yeah. he can do. You can do. You can either. do that. You can, you do, can make that work. Here's the thing. Really? I think the yes. thing with 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 fashion in general, it's just about the confidence of the choice. You know, yeah, are you going all the way Look in? Look at my man Jonah Hill out there. Yes. Wearing whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. And by the way, it looks great. He looks great. The more, like the more sort of out. Yeah, I'm sorry, Glenn. He needs help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. I, now, Glenn, I think you can wear that flat build hat all day. In fact, I think it looks really good. The flat, you like the flat. Okay. Yeah. I, I kind of wish you would take in a picture. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's never, it's never, that actually, maybe the trick is that I'm trying to, maybe I'm making the hat too tight. Because mm-hmm. that was a little loose yeah. on me, and mm-hmm. that felt good. But then that always feels guilt- goofy to me because it seems like there's too much room on There's the outside. And then, here. You know what I don't have confidence to do, but I think they look great, is like the full-on like Bob Dylan sort of like half cowboy, half fedora hat, mm-hmm. you know? Like the real hipstery mm-hmm. kind of just like strong hat that choice. whatever hat choice you make, you pull off. Sunglasses well, and hats, uh, they all look good on you. Well, I, you know, I think it's just the hat itself looks good, right? And so I just chose to wear it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think that's what I'm saying. It's like a it's head shape. Like, it's like a yeah, head I think shape you got a good, you got a head and a good face shape for glasses and sunglasses. I, I, I've know. noticed. I don't know. I'm sure there's plenty of hats and sunglasses that would not look great. I'm know? noticing well, that uh, there's a trend that there's a lot of a lot of compliments being thrown Charlie's way on this podcast. Let's get Glenn and, some compliments. No, 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 no. That's not that's not what I'm asking for. That's not what I'm asking for. That's true. For. Like yesterday, you guys were saying that I was very athletic, and I was thinking you guys are athletic. What you think? I, there's something, you know, I don't know. Yeah, you're just, I just, it's just something I've noticed. It's okay. Okay. As you were. You know, um, I'm a jack of all trades and hats and, uh, yeah. hats, you know. athletics, sunglasses, athletics and dabble uh, on, but you dabble in a million things, a million more than I do. I feel like I get very, very good at like a couple things versus you do. Yeah. I'm bad. You do a I'm, lot of I'm things bad. not that way. I'm, yes. I do a lot of things not that way. Average. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. Like I'm like kind a true, of okay. Uh, at some... dilettante, <laughs> I think is the term. It is? Yeah. 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 I don't know what that word is. So I mean, I've heard I that think, word, I but I, if somebody, I'm being honest, I don't know what it is. It's like somebody who um, 
has a lot of like passions, but isn't serious about any of them. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, yeah. Like, that, that yeah. No, right. well, I'm very serious in the moment, and yeah. then and then I'm done for the day, and I'm like, great, I'll do that tomorrow, and then I don't. But then I pick it back up two weeks later, and I'm like, not that good, no, but I keep. I don't going. think I don't think you are that. I, I think you 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 really learn and get into things and and know a lot of stuff. And Glenn, I love your hat. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Should we talk about this episode? Um, sure. I, I thought it was pretty fun. I don't remember this being the second episode of the third season. I don't know why, but for some reason this episode- Because we shot like, it much later. And did then we? I think we liked it and pulled it up or something. Well, a lot of the scenes were shot in Philly, yeah. for sure. But that um, was at the end. Which was at the end of our shooting yeah. schedule, usually. So, yeah. Did you guys notice something um, that- So, we, we, we have a thing now, or we had a thing <clears> then, when we would have like two or three scenes before the episode started. And, oh, instead and we just of, started doing instead of one doing single yeah. scene. So there's like one oh. there's like two scenes. Mm-hmm. There's the there's the scene in the bar where we're all arguing like, mm-hmm. I, like crazy and, and Charlie screams. Then we go outside. Yeah. Right? Then we come back for a, essentially a third scene after um, back at the bar. Back at the bar where we're actually talking about what we're gonna do. <laughs> and we then at some point just skip past that and now we just have somebody come in in the cold open and say, okay, the episode's about to start because we're going <laughs> to go right. try out for the Eagles. But yeah. we, you don't know that we're going to try out for the Eagles for, for a very long time. Yeah, for longer and than it's unnecessary. Um, hmm. Is that arguing, was that a sort of self-aware meta Yes. Like answer yeah. to like a criticism of the show. Isn't it funny that we like, <laughs> what, like eight, 10, 15 episodes into doing our show or like, well, we better comment on what Let's we're doing. Yeah. Like, yeah, just self-reflecting constantly. Uh, but but I, I do, I do appreciate that we double down. So people are like, ah, it's the show where they just yell at each other. It's so annoying. And we were like, you know what? <laughs> Let's start an episode where we're screaming at the top of our lungs. Let's acknowledge it. And then keep doing and it. Lean like, into and lean really it. lean yeah. into it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what... One little thing I had completely forgotten about this episode, which I enjoyed so much, was the capes. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, when the, when people yeah. were drawing out wearing capes. And yeah. I had no recollection of the guy with the lunchbox. Yeah, he was Whose great. mom made his cape. Who yes. was fucking great. Yeah. 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 Who was that guy? He's an actor. Yeah, I, I don't know. know but he I, killed mean, like, me. I don't remember. He his... killed me. And when uh, I'm, I'm just talking about the things I like, this is not really interesting. Philip Newby. Comment- Philip, Philip Newby. Okay, wait. Philip, Philip Newby. Yes, that's a nebbish guy. It says, which I'm <laughs> assuming guy. was that guy. I remember him being now. Look, maybe I'm wrong. Well, can you look it up, Meg? And if not, we'll cut that. Cut that. Cut that. I, I think he was legally blind. Yeah, I think so. I remember yeah, him no, saying, like, on day one, he, he was like, "Oh yeah, been. I'm. Le- yeah. I can't really see." And yeah. we were like, "Right. Well, you should definitely um, come join us. Like, that's such a." fun character trait for someone trying right. out for the eagles yeah right to not be able to see it was so funny whose uh, mom made him a cape phase on love is hilarious Amazing. in the episode do you guys remember phase on Fa- I, I i every time i see phase on in something i'm like why is this guy not a massive movie star i know but, why. <laughs> uh, yeah i think i know why too maybe yeah. i don't know i don't know if this trend like w- you know th- like sort of carries through his entire uh acting career but <laughs> i'm sure you guys remember this the the very first day that we shot with him, uh, it's not the first scene that we see him in because that was actually in Philly. Mm-hmm. So that was much later. The very first scene that we shot, I believe, was the scene where he calls us all over and he, you know, gives us the speech right before he introduces uh, Donovan McNabb. And the speech was so long. The speech it was like it was a, like a page and a half, and it was really funny. Yeah, was, I remember it was really funny. We right. were really looking forward we to seeing it. We spent a lot of time yeah. crafting this really funny like speech that he gives to everybody. And Faison, so the way the way we do things, and not a lot of shows do this, but but uh, what we always do is the very first thing we do is we just read the scene. We get together with all the actors that are in the scene. We've got what's called sides, which is just a small version of the the, the scene in script form, and you we just read it first before we block it. Well, so we show up to uh, to do this scene. We're outside. We've all got our sides, and we're all standing around. Except I noticed that Faison didn't have his sides. And I was like, oh, wow. This guy's like a made, this he's, guy's a pro. He's off book, as he's they say in the book. industry. He's yeah. already off book. And normally you're not off book by that time. You know, you, you but I was like, man, he's, it's a big speech. It's a big speech. He, it's a big memorized speech. It. Yeah, he, he, he must have really memorized it. Weekend. Yeah. It's a Monday morning. He took the whole weekend. Right, exactly. So we show up, he, he, you know, we gather around for rehearsal. Faison's there, you know, we're all looking around and, uh, you know, Savage calls action. He's like, action. Nobody says anything. And 
And we're like, oh, uh, Faison, that's you. And he's like, oh. <laughs> and we're like, go. <laughs> and he's like, well, he died. And he, he's like, he's like I, I don't know. Uh, does what, anybody have any signs? He's, he's like, like no, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? So not, not only like, did well, not, he didn't read it. Not right. He didn't even read. Not it. entirely certain he read the script. Oh, he definitely didn't read the script. D you know, uh, 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 <laughs> no way. Sh showed up to the rehearsal not knowing his lines and didn't even have the sides to prompt his lines. Yeah. To, to be very clear, it's not it's not a rehearsal like a week before you film. It's the rehearsal is just right before you say action and actually roll the camera. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. So, You've got maybe fifteen minutes between the time you rehearse. Yeah, the 15 yeah, minutes they light it and then your you're shooting it. And adjust your shirt and then yeah, make sure you your shoot. microphone's in your shirt. And, and we're like, oh no, oh no, this guy's got a, a page and a half long speech. He's like, we're screwed. And he, and we were, and he didn't know it. And he just improvised a bunch of stuff and we cut it, you know, down to that little short yes. thing that's in the thing. Yes. That's in the episode. Yeah. Yeah. And it, God bless him. And it totally worked. I mean, that's the thing is like, I think that he's, and also he's so lovable and fun and yeah. he was really cool. It wasn't like he was coming in to be no. a dick. He no. was just like, I, I, this is the way I do it. I guess there was also a conception that we were an improv show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think people thought we were just like, yeah, here's a scenario. Mm -hmm. Let's make up a scene. Yeah. Uh, which we were definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> we weren't. By the way, that would be really funny if he thought that. Uh, did we hire him? We just made an offer to him. We just made an offer. Yeah. We'd seen the movie made. Yeah, an elf. An I mean, elf. An elf. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. He's so And we're like, funny. this guy's great. And it turns out, yeah, it, 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 it he's one of the funniest parts of the episode. I mean, it absolutely, it's absolute, it absolutely works. He's just doing his own thing. And we were like, great. There is oftentimes a doing. thing where like, we scripted a whole thing and you do realize, oh, I don't need any of these words. I just need the essence of what these words are trying to get after, <laughs> which he sort of embodied, which is just like, I just need the energy. Right. And the intention, and one sentence can cover this entire speech. By the way, by the time he introduces Donovan McNabb <laughs> and Jeffrey, Jeffrey comes out and does that commercial, I mean, I was crying tears. Yes, Jeffrey, laughing, amazing, I and mean, that's that. why we've used Jeffrey's Jeffrey incredible. year after year after year uh, and, uh, across shows. I mean, I've used them on Mythic Quest a number of times. I, I, yeah, we put him in a pilot years ago. Yeah, we've had him play multiple characters on uh, on It's Always Sunny, although always as Jeffrey Owens or this mysterious man who we. Don't no, know. he's also played Tiger Woods. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I, he's I, played Don, right, but it's, Don but, it's, but it's always the same actor who presumably is Jeffrey Owens, although he he never fesses up to that either. Yes, because he never fesses up to actually having been. Uh, what was his Elvin. name? Elvin. Elvin on, on the Cosby Show. Yeah. But w one, one other thing I wanted to bring up about Faison, <clears throat> I'm sure you guys remember that. No, of course you do, because we've joked about it many times. The man could not say the words Donovan McNabb. Yeah. <laughs> Donna John the Crab. <clears throat> Dot, Donnie and the Crab. Donnie and the, the Crab. Out, yeah. Donnie and the Crab. Donna, no, you're not a big football fan, I think, Faison. <laughs> well, I, I, <laughs> I guess not. Yeah. I guess not. But just, by the way, that is a difficult name to say. Donovan McNabb. I'm having a hard time saying not it. Not that hard. I'm on pain <laughs> medication, though, so I have an excuse. But, uh, it's just a name. D but, Don but, Evan McNabb. Yeah, yeah. Slow it down if you need just, to. Yeah, we'll yeah. Just, yeah. But he would just, if make, you make watch the, the episode, please yeah. please watch the episode and watch how he pronounces it because he never got it right We once. could go back and get the, we could get the outtakes. It might be worth like putting that out there because yeah. I, I don't think we put it on like a reel or whatever. He no. kept calling him Donnie John Crab McCrab. <laughs> Donnie John McCrab. Donnie John I think in the episode he calls him Donovan 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 Mab. Donovan Mab. We use the best it's one. A bunch we, of M's. we get the best one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one that's, that was the closest. Now a but professional. But it doesn't matter. It's still so funny. It just doesn't matter. It's Donovan. kind of better that he doesn't say the real name because then it's sort of. It's almost implied that he's like not legally allowed to call this man Donovan McNabb <laughs> because he's not Donovan McNabb. <laughs> right. So right, he's right. going to dance around it. Yeah. One thing we do in this episode that we then go on to do a number of times, and we've kind of gotten away from it, um, I think in probably in a good way, because it dates the episode in a weird in a weird way, where we are referencing like popular culture, like movies that had come out. Mm. So yeah, we're, with we're Invincible. We're talking about Invincible. Yeah. And yet, like, you know, the way that movies kind of come and go, yeah. nobody knows that movie anymore. But our, since the show's continued on, people might go back and watch these episodes, and you have no idea what we're really talking about it's pretty funny that we're talking about it as the new kids on the block movie yes i do true. like that i do like that and, <laughs> and not true. only do we ref not only do we refer to it as that but 
Faison refers to it. <laughs> yeah. Because of the new kids on a black movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah, That's yeah. why they're having to do it. Because yeah, they're getting so many. It. Yeah. They because, got badgered into it. Because that was the plot of the movie, right? Like they yeah. had a tryout and then. Was that based on, that was based on a real thing, yeah, right? Now, yeah, Vince I, I, I have to admit, I never, I actually never saw that movie. Yeah. I did not, not even when we were writing the episode, I didn't even watch it. I should have. I did, just didn't. It's like, it's Rocky in foot, in a football. But, but it was based know, on a real story? Yeah. Okay, now so t do you know the story? I do, but it's not as it's not as it, the, the guy Vince Papali was a player was like a track star. So it wasn't like some like rando guy from the neighborhood. He was just older, and then it turns out he was like, can you believe it? He was thirty one years old. But I mean, did was there <laughs> did the did the Eagles hold a tryout? Yeah, they they do for, that. Oh, they do that. Yeah, every NFL team still continues to do a version of that. They're just fucking randos yeah, the whole, just like, show open, up? Open tryouts, yeah. They're like, That's just real. in case, you know, there's a farm somewhere and there's a right. dude working in the barn right. and he's 7'7", 380, and he, he's the fastest runner in the world. And they're just hoping that that yeah. guy shows up. Yeah. He was just too stupid to realize that football existed because he was kept well, in he had a Well, he had a strict baddie, right? And, and it was, he was like, he was I know up. you can play football, but we need you here on the farm. Man. And then- What's football, daddy? <laughs> enough about football. His daddy played football, but he didn't make the, the Cowboys. And he was heartbroken. And he's yeah. like, I just- And then when the son makes the team, he was just like, I just didn't want you to go through the heartbreak, son. Mm -hmm. You know, but then- <laughs> But then the guy makes the team, but then his heart explodes at 28 years old. Yeah, because he has thyroid problems, <laughs> right? Because he's seven foot seven. I mean, yeah. didn't we just establish that? I'm going along with what you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, he's got a thyroid issue. Um, <laughs> Vincent <laughs> Papalius? <laughs> Papa, yeah, no. Vince Papalia. Papalia. Papalia oh, no, I was like mixing that. up with Do you Lucas remember uh, the refrigerator, Perry? Of course. Oh, yeah. He, play, he played for the Bears, but then also the Eagles. Did I he mean, play for the Eagles? Yes. I remember him on the Bears. Yes. Yeah. Just so big, he could just run over everyone. I remember the... the, the he scored like a huge touchdown that that one... In the Super Bowl. In the Super Bowl, yeah. right. The yeah. Patriots versus the um, the Chicago Bears. Yeah. And the Pats lost like... It was like 60 four, to four, three or 46 something. 46-10 or something like that. Oh, Lord. No, it was like 60 to three. Look up what that was. Uh, what year was, was that? It was a beatdown. The yeah. Go uh, Patriots-Bears Super Bowl. 1986. Six, 1986. 85. Yeah. 85 season, 86. 86. Wow. Wow. I mean, look. 46-10. 46-10. 46-10. I have a weird thing. For I feel like that's what you I remember said. like football scores. And I feel things. like that's exactly what you said. I dramatized yeah. it. You sure did. Well, yeah. it, because it was, a, it, it was a beat down. I think that it was yeah. actually worse than the score. Yeah. Like, I think they kind of let them score yeah. at the end. They just didn't care. Mm. I just gave up. Ouch. Yeah. You know what we gave up on? Completely forgot about the character of Doyle McPoyle. Yeah. I did not remember there was a Doyle McPoyle. Yeah, there's a Doyle. Maybe he died from that shot, that bullet wound. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, 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 I was laughing so hard at you laughing because this is all happening in the moment where they're just walking out of the... Um, we're walking out of the RV and you're commenting on each one yeah, of them right. as they come down and you, but you're seeing them for the first time in oh, real yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, oh no, yeah, that was yeah, all, yeah, that yeah, was all improvised. I was like literally laughing <laughs> yeah. as he's, as he's doing it, but it, it right. just works. It works as the character. Yeah. 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 You're, yeah, yeah that's you're out here. Yeah. In the world. You're in the world. Oh, that's good. the sun. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh good. You brought your fife. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, what is that a jar of? Yeah. Oh yeah. What <laughs> is that a jar of? <laughs> But yeah. once again, the props department doing like an amazing job of like putting together a, a group of weird things and then you not seeing them until you're seeing them in, yeah. for the first time. <laughs> Even just the coverage of that, though, I kind of was like, oh, right. We really stopped down to see all those people come out. Yeah. Which I feel like maybe we wouldn't do now, but maybe we would. Did we play the Hawaiian, uh, the McPoyle Hawaiian theme song? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Every time, pretty much every time we see the McPoyles. Yeah, yeah, we play this uh, this like ho Hawaiian, Hawaiian cowboy. Country. Yeah, Hawaiian cowboy. Is yeah. that the name of the song? Hawaiian cowboy. I feel like it was it, something it, like that. Maybe it was just like it was a you know there was this library of cheap music that we could use, and uh, it was probably listed as Hawaiian cowboy or something I, like that. I yeah. feel like it. Was, Let's talk yeah. about that for a second because mm -hmm. our music, um, which which we we love and have been using from day one. We've never um, light. We've never had the money to license it and keep it ours. Like to write music and then to have it be like owned by the show. So there's a, a company that owns this library and they just license it out to 
anybody and everybody. Yeah. So like there was a year where Madden, the Madden football game, mm -hmm. the sunny theme was there was the Madden theme. And right now on Minecraft, I hear I hear Sunny music in the background of my house. I'm like, what's going on? Are the, my kids watching Sunny? It, they're, it's on Minecraft, Minecraft videos. They're using Sunny music on Minecraft yeah. videos. Yeah. Oh, weird. Yeah, and it's a very heavily used. Catalog. It's in commercial. You hear in commercials all the time. Yeah. I, it used to upset me because I'd be like, oh man, dang it, why didn't we just like have a theme song that was just ours, you know? But I think maybe it ended up working in our favor because it tri like every time those songs play, people think of Sonny. Eventually, yeah. Even yeah. Eventually that happened in it's the like beginning. It's free advertising. It's like if, free advertising. If there's an association with the show. Yeah. But like Madden is way bigger than Sonny. So people no. would be like, <laughs> Steve Madden, like the purse company? Like what are you, what are you talking about? The shoe guy? Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no, what are you talking about? No, you're absolutely right. That game's way bigger than. Sony, yeah, so sure. people will be like, "Oh, that's the music." I don't, I don't know, but it's it was always funny to me that like look like look around all the shows that you watch and know. You're like, "Oh no, they didn't use that theme song on a on a Tide commercial." No, ours is the only one. Yeah, the only one where mm -hmm. they're like, "Oh, Cheers." I, well, literally, they they now are using the Cheers song on a yeah, commercial. Yeah, what did I see that? But on? That must have cost them a fortune. Seriously, to pay Paramount. A fortune. Who wrote that theme song? Who the wrote Cheers the theme one? song to Cheers? It's a good theme song. It's a the good Golden Girls great. one really. is amazing. It's incredible. And yeah, that guy Girls. was like, it was, he was just like a pop artist. Yeah. And his version of it is strange. Like the woman singing it is a much a cool, Thank you cooler for being version. A friend. Um, Gary Portnoy. Gary Portnoy is Cheers? Is Cheers. Is he and, also Golden Girls? Uh, he might be. God, it, sounds... it might be the same guy. Or maybe it's. Andrew, who will be young or something. Is true. Mm, I don't think so. It's Wait, some so, pop guy, yeah. Like so you're he, saying the guy who did the Golden Girls theme song, he has he, a version yeah, of that song. Yeah, his version of that song totally is new. not. Yeah, well, it's What's him the name singing of the song? it. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for being Andrew a friend. Andrew Gold. Andrew yeah. Gold. It's, it's in his name. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. It took him about an hour to write. It, yeah. <laughs> it always does. Yeah. It always does. Um, now that was the cocaine. I'm gonna get out of having this because <laughs> really I know I told you guys this this story before. But um, there was a time where I sat next to uh, the drummer for uh, the band Survivor on an on an on a flight, right? And I got to chatting with this guy, super nice guy, looked like one of those guys who was like, "Oh, you're still rocking like the '80s hair band look, but you're like in your." late 50s, you know, but whatever. Anyway, the guy was super nice. And uh, he actually told me the story of how he, how the band Survivor wrote the song Eye of the Tiger for uh, Rocky Three, I believe it yeah, was. Three. Yeah, Club yeah. Nine. So uh, Stallone had actually called the lead singer of Survivor uh, and left him a voicemail. And uh, he was like, you know, beep. Hey, uh, this is uh, this is Sly Stallone, and uh, I really like your music, and I'd love for you to write the theme song to the new Rocky movie that I'm doing. Right. So this guy gets the message, uh, gets the voicemail, and he's like, "I asked my buddy, like, fucking with me, you know what I mean?" So he he doesn't he pays no attention to it. Gets a call, gets another voicemail like a couple weeks later. He's like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? You know, this it's sliced the law. I really want to use it. You know, and he doesn't and, know. I feel like this collaboration could be a real knockout. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but again, he he just thinks it's like a, you know his friends like fucking with him. So he doesn't he doesn't call the guy back. Um, then he gets a call from his agent. His agent's like. Dude, what are you doing? You know, or his booking agent or manager or whoever. He's like, Sly Stallone is like trying to get in touch with you. He wants you guys to write the new theme song. And he's like, oh shit, that's real? Yeah. So so then he gets on the phone with Stallone. Stallone's like, you know, basically tells him, uh, I, I I need a theme song for, my, for Rocky Three. I think you guys are perfect for it. I'd like for you guys to write one. But here's what I need. I need you to write two songs because, you know, what if I like one over the other? I, I need you to write two songs. We'll pay you to write two songs. So these guys get in the studio. They spend about two weeks crafting the most epic song ever right and then they get to the very end of it they realize it's like two o'clock in the morning and they've got to turn in both songs the next day to, to Sly Stallone and, and listen when you tell Sly Stallone you're t you know you're hitting a deadline you better hit it because Sly's going to come after you you know what I mean um with the expendables <laughs> uh 
So they they realize they're like, oh shit, we have to write like a second song. They're like, oh, we'll just bang something out real quick. And over the course of the next like hour or so, they just like t- wrote Eye of the Tiger and just did Eye of the Tiger in like an hour or like two hours. And they're like, all right, let's go to bed. That's it, it, at least we'll give them two, but clearly the other one is better. He played, and of course, you know, the, you know, the rest of that is they played Eye of the, uh, both the songs and, and Sly loved Eye of the Tiger. And they were like, what? We were just fucking around. Like that was, you know. And then the other song he ended up using, I believe, in the movie Fist. <laughs> Fist? Yeah, he did a movie called Fist. He did? Yeah, Sly? I think Sly? so. Fist? I, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, like yeah, the yeah. theme. Yeah. What was Fist. that about? I'm nervous. Typing yeah, don't, Fist. Mag, mag, don't Google that. Because <laughs> um, this, no, is, all work. this <laughs> is all work. It's an work. acronym, F-I-S-T. Yeah. yeah, it was an acronym. Yeah, a right. neo-noir crime drama. Weird. Yeah, so I believe he used that other Survivor song in the movie, Fist. <laughs> what that's what song that was? Uh, I don't know actually. I don't know. Anyway, the guy from Survivor was very nice. The drummer, I, I liked him. He was he told some good stories. That's the only one I remember. Um, Do you want to tell one of the good ones? <laughs> Listen, man. He's Come on, on man. a lot of pain pills. Come on, man. I'm on a lot of pain pills right now. I'm not thinking straight. Yeah, yeah. Okay? What do you got? Uh, yeah, what do you got? Tell us a good story. <laughs> um, I, I am curious to know, uh, like, if you guys, I know you, you got, you've you've done acid before, right? Do you not want to talk about this? No, yeah. <laughs> okay. Have you done acid? Yes. You did acid? Uh-huh. When did you do acid? And what, like, what happened? Right, high, like right after high school. Just once? I twice. You, you did it. We've done twice, it twice. Yeah. Okay. When what? What were the circumstances? And do you have any funny stories surrounding that? Because yeah, it's a fun drug. No. What? Uh, what was the name of the? Why am I blanking on the name of the um, music series that was big when we were? I keep thinking Lollapalooza. Could, Lollapalooza. Oh yeah. Music series. <laughs> well, my mind Christ. went to Coachella and I couldn't get it out of my head. But uh, yeah, Lollapalooza. Yeah. I did some did some acid with Lollapalooza. Yeah. Is that fun? No. What year? No, no. Uh, the 1996? 96. Could have been. The Be- okay. it, was, it was the Beastie Boys. Hole. No, that was 94. Oh, so I was in high school. That was 94 because uh, I was at that Lollapalooza. Probably not the same one. I went I went to the one in, in Atlanta. Yeah, I'm I don't think, I don't think you came to Philly. No. No. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, I, it's just not for me. No, it's not your May, thing. I might maybe try it again later when my kids are older and I can get in, like, I want to break through the matrix and see what's on the other side kind of right, thing. You know right. what I mean? I think I want to go on a guided one at this yeah. point, right? Like, I want to see the destruction of my ego before my very eyes. Yes. Yes. I don't want to just, you know, take like three tabs of acid and drink 16 course Lights and then you know, throw up. <laughs> you were also probably like, you, you're fighting it. You know what I mean? Like when it kicks in, you got to lean yeah. into it. You know, when you right. start fighting it, you know, that's when the fear kicks up. Yeah. yeah. And when the fear gets in, then you're fighting the fear. Stop for uh, it's a losing 12, battle. 13, 15 hours. Yeah, Depends yeah, on how yeah, much yeah, it took, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Or years, yeah, depending on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah unfortunately. Did. I think you had, you've had some good trips. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, and some bad. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I, I ate too many mushrooms once at a fish concert in 96. You went to a fish concert? Oh, yeah, buddy. Oh, he was, you were a big yeah, yeah, fish, yeah. Right? What? what? We were at the Clifford Ball. He was oh, a jam yeah. band guy. Oh, yeah. I was there with uh, me and my pals. And, uh, oh, man, it's so, like, we were so low rent. Like, we went with this other group of kids, and they, like, they were, like, kind of rich kids. They had a Volvo. They had, like, a nice, like, tent and shit. We had, like, a tarp. <laughs> 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 and then we were like hey we're gonna try to make a little tent out of this tarp can we use your frying pan they, had, they were like making like pancakes and shit and we like fucking totally fucked this kid's frying pan up trying to like <laughs> hammer, hammer and spike we're like, we didn't mean to we're like i'm so sorry dude i ruined your nice frying pan <laughs> um and then we got our hands on like an extraordinary amount of of very powerful mushrooms and ate way yeah. too many of them i remember i remember passing out like within the first five minutes, throwing up. Oof. And then like when I came to, I was already tripping a thousand times harder than I already had. And this was within the first 30 minutes. I was like, okay, this is going to be quite a ride. And I remember just trying to like hang on to my sanity for my mm-hmm. dear life. Like <laughs> at one point yeah. we're in the concert, you know, and, and uh, we're just kind of like sitting on a lawn. And all of a sudden like everyone turns around. They're looking like right at us. Oof. 
And we're mm. like, <gasps> that's no, you don't want it. <laughs> Why is this they happening? Know. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Only to realize there's like a marching band, like moving like <laughs> right behind us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't realize what's going on. I remember another one of my buddies said like, he's like, man, the cutest girl came up to you and asked you for a cigarette. And all you said was like, yeah, I'm all about it. Yeah, I'm all about it. And <laughs> just, you know, you know. Uh, but but you know, mostly it was good. And then, I don't know. I think I would do it again once I got through this parenting phase in my life. And my kid yeah. was, I, I, didn't, I, I would hate for the fear to kick in and be like, oh shit, I'm, I've compromised my brain and I got a kid out there. But I do think... I don't know. I think it's like something everyone should do a little bit of. I so. kind of do too, actually. I think under the right circumstances, I think it's uh, it can be a very, very eye-opening experience. I mean, like, I, I you, personally, you've done ayahuasca. You've done a lot of psychedelics, right? Um, yeah. Uh, I know. <laughs> you had to think about that, <laughs> well, which is no, interesting. Well, no, because well, it, because it's because I haven't done like an ayahuasca ceremony. I, I did a ceremony with uh, a shaman and a bunch of other people, and uh, took something that was a it was actually a combination of ayahuasca and uh, and psilocybin. So, uh, but it wasn't like a super high dose. So I wasn't like tripping balls because it was my first. Ceremony. No, but weren't you doing one of those things which sounds awesome and also disgusting and terrible at the same time where you were like shitting in a bucket and then throwing up no. and then also oh you no, no, it no, wasn't I, one of those no because i know people have gone through that we're like no man it's awesome you go through like this guided tour yeah. in your house and like you shit your brains out but you got a bucket so you do it into the bucket and then you also <laughs> vomit i'm like okay where's the good part <laughs> it was very <laughs> spiritual <laughs> it's super spiritual like you really like see right. you know you what's inside of you yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah because it's now in a bucket <laughs> Um, Charlie, I don't feel creatively good about the ep the episode where we talk about Invincible. I feel creatively good about the episode that aired in two thousand and two or whatever that was. <laughs> yeah, but I don't like. I felt like the podcast version wasn't. We we didn't. We got we got about half. I I was listening to a little bit of it, and I just don't think it was very good. I think it was boring. And I want to blame it on Glenn. Well, no, that's not true. I don't want to blame it on Glenn. I want to blame it on Glenn's um, busted collarbone. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I want to, um, I, I got three options, right? I can mm -hmm. blame it on me. I don't want to do that. No. I can blame it on you, but you're here. I'm here, yeah. Um, but Glenn has left and he's not here, so I could blame it on Glenn. Yeah, Glenn's not here. I think we should blame it on Glenn. And to be a good friend, I could say, well, he was on pain meds for his broken collarbone, so we could blame it on that. Yeah. I think that's I think that's I think that's fair. So here we are, and it's a different day, mm -hmm. and we're wearing different clothes, and we're talking about the thing that we were talking about. But most importantly, Glenn isn't here. Just to be clear for the people who aren't yeah, uh, Glenn, watching the Glenn's show, Glenn's not here. He has a thing. He can't even be here. So we're going to have somebody uh, who's going to call in, who's going to take his place. Well, we're getting a call. We're getting a call. Are we getting a call? Yes. Who, all right. Welcome to the Always Sunny Podcast. You're on with Rob and Charlie. Hello? Hello! Well, here's the thing, special caller. So we were talking about this uh, episode, The Gang Gets Invincible. It's one where, where uh, the gang tries out for the Philadelphia Eagles that happened in season three. And uh, we just, uh, we, we, we didn't do a good job. The podcast wasn't funny. Now, we've gotten rid of Glenn. Uh -huh. He's he's uh -huh. he, he had to go somewhere. He couldn't stick around. But what? we thought we'd take this special call. Mm-hmm. You guys, I really, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm happy to. Your pop voice by. is so, that is so loud. Can you turn her down in my headphones? Is that not so shrieky in your ears? You guys, do you want me to come in because no. this is the very last minute? I'm happy to come in. I hear that you're recording now, so how far are um, you? That way, people... are you close by? I'm in the. I don't know where you are, and I'm not really coming in. Um, <laughs> 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 meant to be funny i don't have any plans to pop by um oh. guys this is really smart i feel good it feels very last minute but i'll still i'll take it i'll take advantage of it let's okay. let's tell uh, the listener at, at home or the watcher uh in their in their probably home or office uh who we have on the line here if you have you haven't guessed the voice mm -hmm. and, yeah. I, and, I it, and i and i haven't and i haven't who is this <laughs> <laughs> you 
you guys, it's the star of, the, of your television show. Uh, the only woman, the, the one and only, uh, the big bird herself. And um, I'm here, and I'm happy to be here. It does feel like a bit of an afterthought, but that's okay. I'll let it go. I've been waiting a long time for this. Thank you for having me. It, it is most um, definitely an, an afterthought. It's, How, it's however, television's Kaylin Olsen, people. It's television's Kaylin um, Olsen. Hey, Kaylin, do you remember being in this episode? Do you remember being in the show at all? <laughs> I remember I remember moments. Listen, this is the episode where uh, I dressed up. What was my name? Cole. Cole, Cole. Cole right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he got me all dressed up, I turned around and looked in the mirror, and I was like, oh, you've made me look like David Hornsby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you, you yeah. did come yeah. across looking like yeah, Hornsby. Hornsby Cricket, for the, for the people at home who don't mm -hmm. know him um, by the first name. Um, yes. Yeah, happens when you put a goatee uh, on me and um, take away my hair. I look exactly like David Horn. Well, one of the good things about having you on for the for, for the for the first time is maybe we could even go back to the beginning of the show. We don't have to talk about Invincible. We could talk about the beginning. What was your experience uh, auditioning for the show? Because I think the first few episodes, I, we got some good feedback that people like to hear some of those stories from the beginning. Yeah, the, the first few episodes were stinkers for me because you guys had already written them. Um, and you did a great job of writing uh, for your characters, which is why I wanted to do the show in the first place, because it was so well written. Um, but not such a great job for Dee, because she was kind of um, a wet blanket. There was a lot of like, you guys, you got to yes. stop having fun. Yeah, um, we, we covered all this. Now, we, some, now listen, yeah, we covered yeah. this on the yeah. podcast, but you don't listen to the podcast. I know, but you don't listen to the podcast. Let's, let's, no, let's which you, you don't support me. You don't support what, my, what about the first? What about the very first time you came into the audition room? Uh, what do you remember yeah. from that experience? Did you you felt do, instantly do you in love? Do you right? even remember Rob in the room? No. So I, what I do remember is as soon as I got in my car, I called my manager because I thought it was such a good. I wanted it so bad, and I was like, I think that was really good. And she goes. Were any of them cute? And I was like, not really. <laughs> <laughs> good, so, good. Uh, it was not love at first sight. It, I really fell in, in love with Rob's ego, I think, during the first season. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah a lot of confidence in that McElhenney. He was in control. Yeah, yeah, I felt safe. You know what I mean? Like somebody was in charge. And funny. So, yeah. I'm not too attractive. Now I am. Now I find him very handsome. Yeah, it only took 17 years, Yeah, really, to get yeah. to that place. It's a, it's a long time. It's a long time. Uh, but I walked into the room, and I instantly, all of you were in there, and you were all participating and laughing and, like, just having fun and encouraging me to have fun with it. And I remember thinking, this is the best audition experience ever, because they usually are absolutely terrible. Well, I think um, a, lot, a lot of that had to do with the fact that we were we we're, were actors and we and we were compassionate to how shitty that situation normally is. And then also you were awesome, yeah. so it was really fun. Yeah, we were laughing because you were funny. Yeah. Oh, you're sweet. I was having fun, and then I remember Rob saying, um, "Okay, just put the script down and just improvise with have this do the scene with Charlie, but just you guys say whatever you want." And that was like, "What?" It was super fun. Are you and calling us? Are you in your car? Yeah. Where are you? I'm outside. Oh, you're outside. <laughs> but you like, are you pulled over talking to us, or are you like on route? I'm on route. I'm driving. I'm being safe. Are you worried about my safety? I'm being very safe, Charlie. What's what is this? Yeah, where were you headed? Tell us about your I'm day. I'm just trying to paint the picture. Yeah, paint Kaylin, the picture you know, here. I'm trying you... to get the big picture here for the people at home. Oh. Well, like, like, let, let's get them all the information. So I took one son to school. She took the other, mm -hmm. and then, then what happened? I, I came did. to work. Now I don't know where you went. Are you going? Did you go to the for, beach for pleasure or for business? Um, today I dropped off one son, I stopped and got the coffee, and then I went and got a facial. Oh, oh there you go. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you gotta take care of that face. Uh, I got a facial, and, um, now I'm on my way to, uh, have lunch with a friend, and then I have a doctor appointment in the afternoon, and then I'm gonna pick up both boys. This is great. From school. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I, now I understand this this, the, your schedule here. This is really good. Do, yeah. Is there anything you want to promote or Rob? Do you get worried? Are you are you the jealous type? Are you like now now who's the friend she's having lunch with? And is it the same person who gave her the facial? And, <laughs> and what's happening here? Like, you know, like and do you, what do you kind of facial was it? Yeah, exactly. Like, do you, you don't have a jealous bone in your body, right? 
I, I, no. I don't think so. No, Ka- don't. Caitlin can speak to that. I don't really know. I don't know. I'm being blue collar. Well, because Caitlin, um, uh, well, because Caitlin had a had a had a sex scene in a movie she just yeah. shot. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. I I I, uh, I had a sex scene with Woody Harrelson. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. In the movie, I told him all about it in great detail, and he was like, "Cool, cool. I gotta go." He just was very distracted. <laughs> didn't really care. Well, you can try and make him jealous, but it doesn't. It doesn't really work. Yeah. Well, because it because you had a sex scene with Woody Harrelson, he wasn't you know like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you had a sex scene with Brad Pitt, he would have been like, now hang on a second. Well, did, did you see that it? sex scene with Woody Harrelson in um, True Detective? I mean, that was what are you saying? Uh, look, I'm intense. not saying Woody Harrelson is not a sexy man, but I'm just saying you're probably He's a very attractive man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a long time you know, ve- vegan. Long time vegan. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the information I know, Caitlin. I'm just trying to fill the airtime here. <laughs> No, well, here's a fun fact about Rob that probably I think most people know. He's very good friends with um, Dak Shepard, who is sort of an ex an ex lover of mine. Mm-hmm. Wow! Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I did not know that. Well, not sort of. I, I didn't mean, know you were that's hardcore what... lovers. Were you I not? did not know that. It was pretty hardcore. I was trying to be. I was trying to, you know, be nice. But um, yeah, no, Rob and Dak's are really good friends. You like men with masculinity inferiority complexes. Yes, it is man. so interesting. Men who appear to be confident but are masking severe or, or, insecurity. Yeah, or trying to prove so hard that they're a man. Yes. Exactly, but then perfectly open to talk about it with other men. That's the exciting part. That's the missing piece. So they, they have it all. They own. have it all. They 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 got it all. They got it all. Oh, sure. That's exactly both hard and soft, you might say. Yeah, yeah, not too hard, not too soft. Not too hard, not too soft. Boys, to men, they become men. Yeah. Uh, Caitlin, do you, is there anything about doing this episode you remember? Do you remember being in Philly when we were shooting and that was like Fred Savage directing days and him like just <laughs> partying like a maniac? I mean, we had, we had good yeah. times in Philly. I believe, did Fred get, he was not arrested because it wasn't he didn't do anything crazy. But he, I think he was pulled over by the police, or the driver was pulled over by the police, and because Fred was hanging out the window or, or the roof. I think he just got yelled at. Like, oh, yeah, he climbed yeah. up the That's top right. of a limo. Why we were in a limo? Climbed, I don't know. Uh, it, but, uh, it wasn't our limo. I don't know whose no. limo it was. I don't know why the why, why the was hell Fred was, in it then. I don't know. Maybe it was Fred's limo. He climbed out the top of it while it was while it was in transit and was like climbing on the yeah. back of the car. There's yeah. something that happens in Philadelphia where everyone kind of loses their minds and does things maybe they wouldn't do at home. That's what I remember about shooting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, you, this you, is 12 years kids, ago. I, I do remember season one filming in Philly and going to just the bar in the hotel we were in uh, yeah. and meeting your buddy. You had somebody who... Oh, who came, another guy she used to. Another guy that you probably fight. used to date. That's, that would be yeah. uh, Ian, right? Ian, yeah, yeah. That, was, that was my boyfriend, my college boyfriend. And we were drinking a lot of Yinglings, mm-hmm. and but I don't think you guys weren't together yet, right? No, no. Not season one, no, no. Um, no. Is it fun? Kate, is it, it fun going to Philly, or is it a little bit stressful because you've got to like deal with Rob's family the whole time, and you got <laughs> and you got to be on. <laughs> I, we don't actually see his family that much when we go because it's such a whirlwind. Um, I love going to Philly. Philly's got great restaurants and great people, and all Rob's friends from high school are there and I, I love it we only stopped going regularly because we started having kids right and it just became a little bit too much yeah. of a nightmare and, and because so- Rob would go on talk shows and tell people where we were filming and we would get so swarmed yeah. that it felt downright dangerous or we're like yeah well, remember we were, the last time we were there we were in a van and people were uh, the, the van was dry moving we were driving and people were um, pounding on the windows and trying to pass like mm-hmm. pieces of paper in for us to sign. We were like, "Someone's going to get run over." This is, and then and then some random man showed me his penis and offered me a beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds 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 about right. Yeah. Yeah. It was like one or the other. Don't I, both of them? No. This is why Rob's not <laughs> jealous because it's nonstop harassment for you, and he just he has to deal with it so much. Yeah, I mean, well, and was that random man Danny? Can we talk about <laughs> was, it, was it Danny? Can we talk about yeah, the penis? I felt bad, but yeah, you didn't want to out him. Hey, Galen, you want to be? No. Oops, it fell out. <laughs> Whoopsie. Oopsie. <sighs> okay, so what's your favorite episode? 
Oh my God! Oh boy! What a stupid question, man! Caitlin, don't answer that. No, don't answer it. What don't are you doing, it. man? What's your favorite episode? That's the, that's the worst, and that's you're not. You know that's the worst. It's, it's the worst. So I have, I have moments. I love when Charlie and I get to uh, pair up and do things. Caitlin, like we, we were thought we were human meat. We were just talking right? about this that you and I have not. I feel like we don't have enough of those things, and they're always so fun and funny, and we don't get to do yeah. it enough. I think next season we got to. Yeah. I feel like in. maybe that's why they're some of my favorite is because it just doesn't happen that often. But um, those are always really fun. I don't know. I just like when – I mean, I, I love things like you guys drowning me in a bog almost. You know, anything that's, like, crazy, those are just fun. You were you were a trooper was. to get in that bog. That was uh, nasty, gross stuff, and you was, and you fully submerged. I'm not that much of a trooper. I whatever. Please, I'm doing it because I know it's going to be hilarious. It's very selfish of me. Yeah, you but climbing. You, are you selfish, climbing yeah. over Mary Elizabeth was well, really fucking funny. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> now you were pregnant through a lot of this this show, right? I mean, we did a whole season yeah. where you were eight months pregnant. What's that like? Yeah. So. The P. Diddy, the P. Diddy boat dance with the inflatable guy that kind of got, kind of blew up and got famous. I was, I just remember being angry the whole time. First of all, we were in Long Beach and it wasn't it like two o'clock in the morning. And it was, and it was cold. Yeah. yeah. And I was, um, I was so hell bent on, on moving my body with the way that that thing was moving. And I was pissed off because secretly I was six months pregnant and I couldn't bend backwards as far as I wanted to and like snap myself back up <laughs> and I remember the whole time just being angry like this isn't working this isn't working I, my stupid baby in there it's ruining everything yeah um, this is all tracking but, yeah. <laughs> this is all tracking it's sort of like when um, uh, for the viewer and listener out there who, who doesn't know that when when Caitlin in one of my favorite moments of the of the show uh, it, she leaves the shoe sales, uh, or the shoe store, and she falls into the car, and she bangs her head. That is her, and that's a real car and a real dent. And she said, not, "I'm doing this." Yeah. Shit. Not only that, and then we, you did one take. It was amazing. We were yeah. like, "Oh my god, she broke her neck," but you were okay. <laughs> you were okay. And then we said, "Look, don't do another take. We'll get one for safety. We'll have the stunt person do it. She's here to do it." Yeah. And she did the stunt woman didn't do it half as good as you did it no because but, she did it safely because the stunt person's like yeah if you do it the way caitlin does it i'm gonna break my neck yeah you could be paralyzed <laughs> yes well listen she i i was angry because she was not funny and she wasn't gonna flail yeah. her body in a funny way and i needed i needed you guys to give me a chance and i knew i only had one chance so i just really went for it yeah um that's not a chiropractic after that but it was totally worth it now, how many bones have you broken over the course of the run of this I, i'm gonna series? let husband and wife talk for a second because caitlin i have to pee. i can't hold my pee i've been holding my pee for so long I'm okay gonna, charlie's I'll be gonna back. go pee. i'll be back I'll okay be back. I'll be all right pee. yeah you gotta take care of your kidneys when you gotta pee just let it go i get it listen to the um, podcast listen listen he's gone he's gone wait, he's gone he's gone now listen i this is what i've he's always gone. wanted i want the podcast to just be a me right and i guess can you I can take, call in from time and to me, time. And me. Right? And, well, and, me, and, and Megan, but Megan won't say a goddamn thing back there. Megan, Megan this is... in. Right now, it's the three of us. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Megan. <laughs> hey, can I ask you a question? Yes, please. Do you remember Rob peeing on you in uh, Philly uh, when he got too drunk <laughs> that night? <laughs> no. What? Oh, wait. In, was it was it Philly or New York? It was Philly. Oh, yes. This is when we were secretly wait, dating. Wait, are you, right? are you wondering which? Wait, wait, yes, it was when we were secretly dating. Have you peed Have on, I peed her, on multiple her multiple times? times? <laughs> like, which city was it in? Or are you just, or I mean, you, do you remember on, the event? But, but, but. Peed on by, uh, listen, you think you're the first person to pee on me? <laughs> Please. Um, yes, I do. We were secretly dating, and you got so drunk. We all went out to dinner. You even, you guys even went out after that. I went back to my room. And you came like drunkenly knocking on my door a couple hours later. And um, yeah, and you, and you answered it, and I was like, hey, baby. <laughs> yeah. I was, the bed was soaked, and you tried to say you had sweat. You were no, like, yeah, it was the sweat. opposite. Like, it was the opposite. You were like, man, you really sweat a lot. And I was like, yeah, I guess I did. So, oh, he's back. He's back. He's back. He's back. I'm back. Yeah, no, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I did no, sweat. Not. Cut the shit. I no, did. it was not. I was, you peed. 
asked me. And you were like, no, I just, I, I dump sweat sometimes. I'm like, that would have come from all over your body, not just by your penis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're talking about when Rob pissed in the bed? Yes. Was this the episode yeah. we were talking about yeah. it? Okay, so yeah. Oh, oh, was this episode that we were talking about? Uh, it was actually, no, the oh, one okay. before, right. but okay, then I think okay. you brought it up again, yeah. Well, yeah, yes. Let me reiterate. I've never listened to your podcast. I, I know. Um, I know. There, but you, there's, but, there's but you no don't watch the show. Time. You don't really watch episodes of the show, right? I mean, no. I I love watching episodes of the show. There were there was a period of like four or five years where you didn't want to watch it because you were in the editing room so much, um, and so we didn't sit down and watch them together. But I've seen, of course, I've seen every episode. I I, I even like them. I know this sounds weird but like if it'll just randomly come on somewhere i get sucked in i think they're hilarious because i also don't remember we've done so many of them and that's we it. often break off into a and b stories i don't always remember what happens in the episode besides what i was doing I, right. I'm, I'm finding how much i've forgotten too and i thought i knew them all like the back of my hand just because of the amount of time we spent in the editing room but uh it's interesting going back watching all these caitlin from day one you're great on the show Thank you, Charlie. Rob gets a lot better, but you from day uh, it one. It took me a while to warm into it. Caitlin, <laughs> Caitlin, I was learning from the masters. I was learning from people oh, like Caitlin and Charlie. You just needed to get fat. That's all. That's you all I needed. Yeah. Yeah. Suddenly you were hilarious. No, I think you're funny in those first seasons too. You don't. You just don't think it, which is why we lean into I Rob. Do. Bob's weird. He thinks he's not funny or like the least funny of all of us. And that's so stupid. That's I know. So that's funny. why we lean and we, 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 we see that wound and we jump right on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's objectively true. I think it's objective, but I'm a lover of comedy, and I can see that you guys are funnier than me, and I'm okay with that. Well, that's that, you're right. That's true. I, I I'm funnier than you. But yes, you're, that's um, true. Yeah, you're very smart. I need something. Yeah, smart guy. <laughs> um. Uh, well, well, I guess we brought out a yeah, news. I mean, I mean you know, is, oh, Caitlin, thanks for calling right? in. I, are you where you have to be? Are you? I'm. I'm uh, you know what? Thanks for thanks for making my ride more fun. I'm about five minutes away. Um, when do you guys want me to come in? Because it'd be fun. It'd be so fun to hey, talk. Hey, Megan, person, let's right? get her off the line. Yeah, let's go ahead and, and cut yeah. this call. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll pop by. I'll okay, just pop sweetie. By. Okay, okay, sorry, you're I'll breaking up. We're Bye. losing we're the connection here. The, you're we're driving the through the canyon. You're driving through the canyon. Bye, Megan. You're my favorite. Bye. Bye, Caitlin. Bye. Well, that was fun. Yeah, I mean, it's not. It's better with Glenn. It's better with Glenn. Yeah. 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 It's it's just that, you know, he was just low energy for that one episode, but you don't want to deal with you that. You know why? Because Caitlin's nice and happy. Glenn's angry. Yeah. And it's and it's really interesting. And that's but, when it's yeah. fun, but when he's yeah. all low energy because he's like, Why am I back and my bones are back and it's not yeah, fun. But, but, but I'm scared. I'm scared that I hit a tree. No, my collarbone's broken. I'm sad. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Which, <laughs> even that would be more interesting than yeah, just yeah. sitting there just low energy. Yeah, and, you like, know, uh, oh, come on, man. And look, I'm not going to blame that on the, like on the football, collarbone. We'll talk about football. I'm going to blame that on the drugs. He was on massive amounts of some kind of downer. I'm on drugs when I can't make a podcast in this way. <laughs> but I think we can both agree it is better with Glenn than it would be with Caitlin. Oh, I mean. 